uh, my bill that I've introduced dealing with, with the caliber weapon, I've held an AR-15 in my hand, I wish I had it. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. Uh, and the bullet that is utilized, a 50 caliber, these kinds of bullets, uh, need to be licensed and do not need to be on the street. <laughs> All right, guys, go to Boy32 here, check it out, sitting in the Freedom office, having a cup of coffee early this morning. And uh, you know what? I'm sitting back and I'm looking at all the unique memes and everything else on the distribution and what's going on on our information highway. And it appears that uh, there are a couple companies that are the platforms for the information highway who have decided who they're going to let distribute information and who they're not. Kind of like communist China. But in any case, let's talk about this. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. Now, that was the video about her talking about an AR-15 being heavy as everything else. And uh, a lot of things going crazy. But uh, she is the author of a lot of these bills that are going out. HR 121, 125, 127, 130. And then there's a gentleman named Al Green. Both Democrats from the great state of Texas but isolated into the more urban area of Houston. Now, I have been to Houston. As a matter of fact, Old Pearland is right there near Houston, and that's where the uh, the guys over there, uh, Primary Arms, are located. If you watch the video of me doing a, uh, a tour of their facility, that was a really, really cool day. In any case, let's talk about this. Uh, HR 121 to provide for the hiring of 200 additional Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosive Agents and Investigators to enforce gun laws. You know, guys, we have enough gun laws on the books already that they feel like if they implement more gun laws, this is going to do stuff that's going to help society. I know Al Green. He's a congressman. He's been in the Congress now since 2005, but prior to that, he was the uh, Justice of the Peace for a small community just outside of Houston and a, a law enforcement officer. So in, in, in other words, he pretty much, he knows kind of what he's saying. And, and guys, I didn't just jump into this thing and start re, re, regurgitating what these uh, HR uh, bills or house resolution uh, bills are. I, I did research. Now, here's the whole thing. Sheila Jackson Lee, now she's no, uh, she's no crazy person. She actually was born in uh, Brooklyn, New York, or New York, uh, law student, the whole deal. And she's been in Congress since 1995, forever. I don't know how these people can stay in Congress for that long. But let's talk about the uh, the enforcement of gun laws. There's enough gun laws on the books, guys. We don't need any additional gun laws. If those dumbasses would work to, one, keep the guns out of the hands of people like gangbangers, who Al Green is concerned about, or all these other people that, you know, Miss uh, Sheila Jackson thinks that these things weigh, well, I don't know, a total of boxes, a lot of boxes. And the, the evil 50 caliber round that these things shoot. Individuals who try to write laws about subjects that they know nothing about. And that's where, again, I'm going to come back to talk about the information highway because what we are doing, or what they are doing, is that they are limiting the information, the true information, from getting out to the public. Now, you don't see Twitter or anybody else trying to limit her. Fact checkers. Bullshit. They'll let that shit slide. Excuse my French. All right, let's talk about H.R. 125 to provide for a seven-day waiting period before a semi-automatic firearm, a silencer, armor-piercing ammunition, or a large-capacity ammunition magazine be transferred. What? And here again, this is individuals, and this was sponsored by Sheila Jackson Lee. These individuals, they have no freaking clue about what they're talking about or what they're doing. They're just throwing some shit out there, seeing if it'll stick. But the funny thing is, is they literally, they, they have it wait for the ink to dry or somebody to raise his right hand on the 20th to figure out what's going on. I have a feeling there's going to be some hammers dropped. Let's talk about H.R. 127 to provide for the licensing of firearm and ammunition possession and the registration of firearms and to prohibit the possession of certain ammunition. Well, I guess that would go towards, you know, that 50 caliber round. I, I, I don't know. This is an idiotic thing. This is just, it's so widespread. It's absolute BS. And again, they're not talking about, let's go ahead and provide for more people on the streets when they're just already trying to defund. These are probably the same people going, we need to defund these police, but we need more police. 
unbelievable. HR 130 to require the safe storage of firearms and ammunition. Well, hell, I don't know how you're supposed to get a firearm or ammunition when you have to register. You have to go through a background check to purchase ammunition. You probably have to stamp each one of the individual rounds and to require the investigation of reports of improper storage and to require the investigation of reports. Oh, so we're going to get our neighbors to go ahead and narc on us if you've got guns laying around. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to see my house. I mean, I, uh, anyway, got to keep all the windows closed. That's what I'm talking about. An unsafe storage of firearms or ammunition. So let's say, for instance, I've got a whole wall of firearms over here and I have my blinds open and there's a neighbor over there who is, well, actually they are, they're very liberal. And if they see those guns, they go, oh my God, he doesn't have his stuff safely stored. We need to call the ATF. Who do we call? I know y'all like my liberal thing that I do, but in any case, Again, we go back to someone who's been in Congress way too long. They don't know what they're talking about, and they're spewing crap. And no one is out there to tell these people, stop. Al Green, here's his. H.R. 167, to prohibit the transfer of a firearm at a gun show by a person who is not a federally licensed firearms dealer. All right, so are we talking about gun shows? Because I go over here and meet you in the parking lot in North Carolina and I can sell you whatever I want, all right? I think it's responsible to go ahead and make sure that the person's, you know, legally able to uh, possess and own a firearm when you do that kind of thing. But there's no law requiring that. But what I'm saying to this is that that's what they call the gun show loophole. They've been trying to gun show loophole everything for the last 20 years until, uh, you know, Obama. That was the big thing. The gun show loophole. If they would just get rid of the gun show loophole, it would prevent everybody. And they're talking about the straw purchases. Gangbangers. And you're not going to do anything until you get rid of the straw purchases. The gangbangers will sit there and just do the drive-bys and everything else. Gangbangers, criminals, don't rely on straw purchases, ladies and gentlemen. They will do what they want, when they want, and how they want because, one, they're criminals. They don't care about the law. You implement all this stuff, it will not affect or change anything as far as gang violence, suicide, or anything else. Uh, those are my two cents on what's going on. The liberals will not stop until they have all the guns out of your hands and mine. And unfortunately for them, we still have this thing called the Second Amendment. And right now, uh, the First Amendment is getting removed as well. And no one's doing a damn thing about it. These platforms, it's disgusting. Twitter, their shares went down 4%. Good for you, Twitter. And I'm guessing you're okay with that. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's my two cents. This is going to be an interesting four years in front of us, for sure. And we will have to write and do everything we can. And we may have to take a stand. And if that's the case... I'm there with you. Let's go to Boy32. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform who support our Second Amendment as it was written by our founding fathers. Not misinterpreted because they think that every right is subject to reasonable legislation in the great words from that witch called Hillary Clinton. I'm out of here. Y'all be good. Peace.